Hi folks, welcome to the channel and welcome to the man cave. So I've had my Insta360 X3 for ooh, a couple of months now, I used it quite a few times uh, on the motorbikes to get those really good sort of unusual looking shots and on two occasions when it's been on the Insta360 arm, that arm has lowered itself unbeknown to me and caused damage on two occasions to the corners of the camera. First time wasn't too much of an issue, as you can see here, that was all right. But the second time, yeah, slightly more serious damage uh, on here, you can see on the corner, and that actually caused this lens to become blurred, and I didn't know why, but I do now know why, because I've actually repaired the camera and it's back to working 100% without any optical issues whatsoever. So if that's something you're interested in, in how to replace the camera module unit of the Insta360 X3, stick around and I'll tell you how I did it and how I did it successfully. So it's fairly obvious the camera has actually two lenses, but did you know there are actually, for want of a better word, two camera processors within the device? So you have two camera sensors and I actually managed to damage uh, one of those sensors whilst the, the camera is being dragged along the tarmac as I was doing about 40 miles an hour and all that vibration has actually caused one of the camera modules to uh, crack so this is the one that I have replaced successfully the camera's working 100% now so you've got two sensors uh, in the camera itself and basically if I can get that in focus um, that's there's a little joint on here and all that vibration when it's dragging along the ground just cause that, that joint to split and then you get a different focal length and then because the focal length or something like that is different, you get the blurriness of the image going onto the sensor because the distance has changed, albeit very small. So when I bought my Insta360 from Amazon, I couldn't be bothered to pay another 40 pounds and get the Insta360 care, but you may want to think about that, certainly if you're putting it on your motorbike, it costs about 40 quid, gives you one free repair or one free replacement camera. Two options then, option one, send the camera back to Insta for about 250 quid for them to repair it and the warranty would still be intact. Option two, repair it myself, knowing that the warranty possibly may now no longer be intact slash valid. I decided to go along with option two, did a bit of internet research, found a online company, details down below. They supply loads and loads of accessories for all these cameras and I suspect that the replacement camera module that I damaged is actually the same, is the same as the one that they sent me and is now in the camera working 100%. So yeah, more than happy with the replacement camera module unit, cost me 142 pounds. Tool wise for the job then, you don't need too many tools. Uh, you might go and you will need your partner's hairdryer if you haven't got one, not that I need a hairdryer. And if you've repaired your iPhone and you've got the little bag of these things, this is these are exactly what you need to get into the case. And if you haven't got those, what you can do is get a plastic card and then use the card to open the camera up. So basically, as you'll see in the video, uh, this was the lens camera module unit that was not working but I decided to remove the plastic covering on this side. So got the hair dry, heated that up, and then with my little spud thing, or whatever it's called, just put it in there and then prise that, this plastic cover off. That's all that is, is a pl plastic cover, as you will see in the video. So if you haven't got one of those, then once you've heated it up, you can even use your finger, pull that up, and then insert the plastic card and then that will allow you to take that cover off because it's only stuck down with a, a kind of, uh, double-sided foamy kind of tape and there's nothing under here to cause any damage but I certainly wouldn't recommend sticking any metal device in there because you may damage the metal under here and you may actually bend the plastic here and put a crease in there so just take your time when you do that as you will see in the video and then you'll also need a couple of jewellery small screwdrivers and that is about it so without further ado Let's crack on, it's gonna take you about 20 to 30 minutes. I ordered my camera lens module from this company, M Tech. They do two, the front side with the LCD and the back side without the LCD. Just make sure you order the correct one, $169 or 142 pounds. Week later, it comes down in this fancy box. 
and I suspect, although I don't know for sure, that this lens camera module replacement unit is exactly the same ones that are fitted in the Insta360. First off then, remove the battery followed by the SD card. I did find the whole process a lot easier to use by attaching the arm to the bottom of the camera. So this is the lens camera unit we're gonna to have to replace. We're gonna access it by removing the backside plastic cover. To do this, just apply some heat to soften off the double-sided tape that secures the plastic cover to the back of the camera. So we're gonna take our chosen tools, as we mentioned before, and again, try not to use a metal screwdriver as you may cause some damage. So I'm using the plastic iPhone screen removal tools and just take your time. You could possibly use your fingernail if you haven't got one of these tools just to get it going and then insert a plastic credit card or that type of thing if you haven't got one of these blue plastic tools. And then just take your time and then as and when just apply some heat just to keep the double-sided tape a little bit on the soft side to make it easier to remove. When you get up to the lens area, just be very careful, take your time. If need be, apply some more heat and then it should all come off very easily. And this is what is left once you remove that plastic cover on the back side of the camera. I would suggest laying the camera down on a microfiber kind of towel just to protect the lens itself and then take your small screwdriver and then undo these six screws. Here, in my case, I could only remove five of them because this one here, the sixth one, was ground down. And once we remove this metal cover, that gives us access to the inside of the unit itself to replace the lens camera module. So I'd actually ground down the six screws so I couldn't actually remove it. So all I did was very carefully waggle the metal cover away from that screw. Be very careful, there are two electrical ribbon connectors which attach that metal plate to the actual camera unit itself. You don't want to just pull this plate off as you'll damage these ribbons here and cause untold damage, possibly. So be very careful, just lift it off very carefully. The pink stuff here is what they call thermal paste that just takes heat away from the camera and you can clearly see the blue waterproofing gasket. Next step then is to remove the electrical ribbon connectors connecting the metal plate to the camera unit itself. So the first one comes off very easily. The second one indicated here. I wasn't too sure how to remove it. I now know that you just pull it straight up indicated here in the direction of the arrow. But I didn't know how to do it, so I left that one in situ. I didn't want to damage the camera or the ribbon. So what we have to do now is then remove the ribbon connector for the damaged camera lens unit, as you can see here, and then remove these four screws connecting the lens camera unit to the body of the device. So the fourth screw, I just had to go in at an angle. So just be careful here, you don't want to damage any of the electrical contacts. So yeah, just went in on the angle and removed the fourth screw. And as you can see here, I then find out the damage to the lens camera unit. This should not be like that. That should be exactly like this. This is the replacement unit. And clearly you can see the vibration has caused it to crack, causing the blurriness and the out of focus picture. So then all I need to do is just remove the bits that I'm gonna replace from the unit itself. There we go. And this is the damaged unit, clearly. The next thing I did was just to remove some of this pink thermal paste from the back of the damaged camera sensor unit. And then all I did was very carefully apply it to the back of the sensor of the new camera lens unit, as you can see here. Then just remove the protective lens cover and then carefully insert the new module into the camera body. I did actually find this to be a little bit tricky, if I'm being honest. So I just took my time, moved things around a little bit at a time, just to make sure I wasn't gonna damage anything, in particular the sensor on the right-hand side here. And then once you're happy, it's in. And at this point, that other ribbon connector that I wasn't sure how to remove fell out. I thought I'd damaged the camera and I'd have to spend another 500 quid, but no, everything was fine, as you'll see a bit later on. So I've now made sure that the new module is in place properly. 
and then it's simply a case of putting these four screws back. At this moment in time, I didn't fully tighten these screws because I just wanted to make sure that everything was seated correctly. This screw here, this is the one that I removed at an angle, but I didn't have to put it back at an angle, I just put it straight in. So I haven't tightened the screws up fully, so just gonna have a look at the back side of the camera just to make sure the lens is seated correctly. I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm now gonna then fully tighten the screws, but obviously you don't want to over tighten them and damage anything. Now that all the four screws have been tightened, it's now time to carefully connect the electrical ribbon connectors back onto the body of the camera. So just take your time, and as you push it down, you'll hear it kind of click. And then this one here, this is the connection port that the ribbon fell out of, much to my horror, thinking I'd damage the camera. But as I said earlier on, all you need to do is just pull it upwards to remove it. So what we're gonna do now is reinsert it by pushing it downwards. Again, just take your time. It's fairly delicate, and at this point, you don't want to damage anything and thereby having to buy a new camera. So there we go, just gonna push it in very carefully. And then once that's in, I'll put the other connection onto the camera body, as you can see here, and just push it down. And again, you should hear it kind of click. Once you're happy it's on properly, we're gonna then attach the metal plate back onto the camera body. So I've now successfully and safely secured all those electrical ribbon connectors to the inside camera body and I just have to remove this grounded screw head from the camera body itself and then just, as I've only got five screws now remaining, I'm just gonna have to reinsert the five screws and screw them up. Clearly my camera is now no longer waterproof because of the damage to the top right hand corner of the camera itself. So there we go, just making sure that all the screws are nice and secure. And then what I need to do now is just insert the SD card, pop the battery back in, and then we're gonna switch the device on to see one, if it works, and two, if the camera has now been successfully fixed. So there we go, that's the rear facing camera. That's fine, nice and clear. And yes, success, we now have a non-blurry focused camera. I have to say I'm fairly chuffed with myself. I've successfully repaired my Insta360 camera. All I need to do now is just push the black protector cover back onto the double-sided sticky tape. There was enough stickiness for it still to stick. And then we'll go outside and have a look at some test footage. So finally, let's just check out the test quality. So this is the unaffected rear camera lens. Really nice, nice blue sky, green grass. There goes the cat. As we pan around, the stitch line is sort of in line with the shadow from my tripod. So pretty much there now, sort of vertically upwards and downwards. Just check out the quality of the sky. No optical difference, no color difference in the sky or the grass. So I'm really happy with the quality of the replacement camera lens module. Thanks so much. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it's been of some use to you. See you again soon. Bye.